You're watching Telecom TV from SDN NFV World Congress in The Hague. And joining me now is Vicky Lonka, who is Vice President of Product Management and Development at Verizon. Vicky, good to see you on Telecom TV again. It's good to be back. Uh, you keynoted this year's World Congress, um, and one of the um, opening statements you made was, we're about to enter a new decade, uh, and it's, it's, it's the 20s, and you're alluding back to the previous Roaring Twenties. Mm -hmm. um, why, why do you think this is going to be a new Roaring Twenties for the telecoms industry? Well, you know, like the Roaring Twenties a hundred years ago, um, I'd like to think we're entering this new age of exuberance uh, because that's what characterized the, the 1920s. And that was also characterized by a significant change in technology and technology improvements that happened and those improvements were very transformative to the social social cultures of the world uh, that, that, that happened afterwards. And so I think the changes in technologies that we're experiencing now will transform our social cultures just as much, if not more. And so I think it's a new you know, centennial from that perspective. And so I'd like to think the, that for once, technology can also be a place of exuberance and it's an exciting place to be uh, in the industry right now. And in order to achieve that, um, do we need to redefine our ecosystem? Do we need to make some changes to the established ecosystem? Well, I think the ecosystem is evolving anyway. So I don't think we have to do anything unnatural to change it or to force uh, some type of function, forcing function uh, that will up, up, up start or, or change up the status quo. Uh, the ecosystems that we have in place will continue to evolve. And I think as we introduce these new technologies and the new use cases that they deliver, uh, the opportunity for many players actually broadens, especially because these in, these new changes in networks and how networks function with 5G and all these other burgeoning technologies are actually going to disrupt uh, current status quos and ro create a rise in application solutions and a focus on customers and business outcomes that's much different than we've ever had before. This is all part of a, a, a network transformation journey and we've been spending a number of years on, on SDN and NFV and virtualization. We are now, the industry is now starting to um, really take a serious look at cloud native technologies. Why, are, why is, are these technologies that seem to be coming from the, the hyperscale, the cloud community, why are they now becoming of interest to CSPs? Well, because this is how we get agile. You know, networks and other functions and solutions in the past really have not been able to scale as at the pace of business. And in order for us to take advantage of all the other changes in technologies, we need solutions and application sets that are cloud native. Even the current functions that have been virtualized really haven't been virtualized in a cloud native fashion because today uh, they may have been defined in software, but the infrastructure that's also needed to change really hasn't been considered when the virtualization happened with NFEs. So to me, as a service provider, that's the next layer that really needs to happen in a more concerted fashion. Is this a, is this a layer that um, virtualization stops, cloud native starts, or is this a layer that uh, augments it and we'll be running hybrid approaches for the foreseeable future? Oh, I do think we'll be running hybrid approaches in the foreseeable future. It'll be hybrid networks, hybrid cloud deployments, hybrid hardware, hybrid endpoints, um, and that's the nature of the game. But that's also why the flexibility is necessary, and that's why we've had all this conversation for so many years about orchestration as well. So we have to be able to orchestrate all these various solutions, and that also includes those hybrid architectures. And Verizon has this vision of um, SDN and NFV, it's an integrated um, vision. Yeah, I mean, we believe um, for us that integration starts at the connectivity layer, uh, and, and this is important because we know in this you know, next new age, everything is about connectivity. Uh, sort of back to what we were talking about in the 1920s, that was the first sets of connectivity where people were listening to radios at, at scale in homes. Television, and I mean, telephones first started back then. Um, but that was a different type of connectivity, is very fixed. Um, now we're talking about mobile connectivity connectivity, uh, but as we know and have, as we've talked about before, it takes a, a lot of 
wires to build a wireless network, and we are building wired and wireless networks, uh, and that's our connectivity layer. But on top of that, we have to build platforms to orchestrate that layer. We have to be able to provide end-to-end -end visibility to ourselves and to our customers about what's happening, and we have to be able to provide closed-loop service assurance so we can guarantee the performance of an application at any point in time. The next and top layer of that is the application, uh, or the microservices that have to come together to deliver an application experience. And ultimately, that's the goal or the nirvana. It's not to necessarily just build the network, it's to deliver that seamless end-to-end -end connection uh, between all the threads that are necessary to deliver an end-user business outcome. And these microservices you, you, you mentioned, this is part of the cloud-native landscape, is it? Yeah, they, they, we believe for the most part they need to be cloud native, particularly when we need to deploy them anywhere and they need to, to move like software moves and customers need those applications and functions to be agile. And so if they're not all cloud native, then it limits the agility and the movement. Some applications may not need that agility because they need a, a hardened type of environment. And so that's why I think we'll stay in a hybrid world for quite some time. And we're also moving our infrastructure closer to our customers. We're getting closer to the, to the edge of, of the network. Um, what, are the, what are the main opportunities and what's the reasons for focusing on edge compute and MEC technologies? And, and what are the associated challenges that you're facing in, when you do this? Well, this is one reason we're so excited about 5G and the potential of 5G. And we also believe at Verizon that while 5G has significant consumer applicability, it has even more significant applicability to enterprise customers. So it's as a product manager who supports our enterprise customers in particular, it's an exciting time to really have that as a focus of the, this new technology. And it's important because it enables us to build solutions and build clouds closer to the customer's edge. That's where that multi-access edge compute comes into play. And that's necessary to deliver what we call the real-time enterprise. And the real-time enterprise is is a way for businesses to actually have true end-to-end -end visibility and control of their infrastructure and of their business processes from the time of production all the way to the time of consumption of their goods. And this is enabled this has to be enabled by 5G. This, this is the only way we're going to get to this real-time enterprise. I believe it has to be enabled by 5G and mobile edge computing. They have to work, they're, they're intimately related in this particular equation because we need that compute power to be at the edge where the customer is. That compute no longer has to be on the device, for example. Uh, an easy way to look at it is thinking of a robot on a factory floor. If that compute has to stay in the robot, then that robot needs a lot more power to operate um, and the, the latency characteristics, you can't take advantage of that by having all that data sit on the robot. If we can have it sit in a mobile edge compute node where the, com the intelligence and the machine learning can take place and where actually the business insights can occur, we can use that information to take action on the flo factory floor in real time. Um, and you know, when we would deploy those types of functions in today's world, which we actually think is progressive in public clouds, you, you can't necessarily have that agility because the latency is a challenge. Well, Vicky, we're all going to look forward to the new Roaring Twenties, but for now on Telecom TV, thank you very much. Thank you.